Today we're talking about ship weapons. Let's get to it. How's it going, citizens? I'm Sir Six, your Salty Aerospace Technician, and welcome to another Star Citizen Analytics video. If this is your first time watching and you want a better understanding of the basics and how things work in the verse, then consider subscribing and turning on all notifications so you don't miss anything. Now, each ship that you purchase in the verse will come with choices, and these choices will weigh out the outcome in terms of PvP, if you so happen to get into it. And when it comes to tight situations, it's all going to boil down to the skills and the weapons you choose. So therefore, getting a better understanding of the ship weapons will give you the edge when you're tailoring your loadouts. Now, before I start throwing punches at weapons and weapons type and such, let's first set a nice foundation and take a look at the basics. So, you have two damage types. You have ballistic and you have energy. Ballistic weapons use a solid projectile, which makes it very effective for penetrating the hull of the ship. It also makes it effective for shield penetration. It's not a lot, but it's just enough so it causes minor hull damage. Of course, once the shields are down, you'll cause a lot more damage. And it's also important to note that you have a finite amount of ammo. And as a 3.6.1, you still have to land and rearm in order to replenish your ammo. And you have your energy-based weapons. These weapons use extremely heated plasma and volleys them at the ship. I feel like this will be very effective against ship armor once it's implemented, of course. Now with our baseline set, now we can dive deeper into the firing styles. These are your cannons, repeaters, gatling guns, scatter guns, and your Jesus beans. Your singed tachyon cannons. Even though we do have distortion guns, these are mainly incapacitating weapons, which are therefore not used in the use of deadly force. So I'm going to leave this out for this comparison. Now let's take a look at cannons first. These weapons have longer ranges and extremely high alpha damage. These weapons also have an extremely low heat rating and lower rates of fire. These two combined means it's going to shoot a lot slower compared to other weapons and it's going to overheat a lot quicker. Next we have repeaters ladies and gents. These are your all around weapons. What these guns offer is higher rates of fire, a higher heat buildup rating, and they offer a buffer at lower to medium ranges. Your Gatling guns are mainly ballistic. They offer a extremely high rate of fire, a moderate heat buildup rating, and moderate damage. These are probably the best weapons if you're a new player and you want to use ballistic. The reason why is because you have an extremely high amount of ammo, and you have your scatter guns, which offer some of the highest amount of damage in game, but it has the poorest of ranges. Even though you can hit out to 1k, you're not doing the full potential damage because of the pellet spread. Therefore, the closer you are, the more damage potential you gain. Now with this all said, let's start talking nerdy. Let's take a look at the heat buildup rating first. We all know that heat is the enemy of all components. When you're firing a weapon and you fire for too long, your weapon will start to stutter and your ship will yell at you because you're degrading the weapon faster than normal. In the repeaters department, the best weapon for not overheating are the attrition series. Combining the averages out of all the sizes 1 through 5, the heat rating is about 84 seconds, which is not bad at all for a repeater. For the cannons department, the heat buildup rating goes to ballistics. When you take a look at the M7A family and the Omnisky family compared to the ballistic autocannon family, the ballistic autocannon family actually has the higher heat rating. Of course, meaning you could fire it longer without the weapon having to stutter. Therefore, this means you have a higher burst DPS. Another interesting fact, guys, is that ballistic weapons use less power compared to energy-based weapons. What this means is that you will have less radiation in terms of giving off EM and IR signature from your ship. This is actually really effective because if you're running a stealth build, you may want to consider using all ballistic instead of all energy. Using energy-based weapons will just give you a higher signature, which is what you're actually trying to diminish in the first place, right? Alright, let's talk about damage next. Even though we have sizes 1 through 6 able to be purchased, the most common weapon sizes that are used in the game right now are sizes 1 through 4. So with that being said, ballistic weapons do technically come out on top. But of course, just like anything in the verse, there's always an exception. So even with all this information I just presented to you, this does not make ballistics at all the current nor future meta, not by far. There are reasons to use one or the other or both especially in the future once CIG has added armor to the game. Again, the major drawback with ballistics is the fact that you don't have an unlimited amount of ammo, 
which makes it harder for new players in the game. They'll just get frustrated once they run out of ammo, and some just don't have the funds to go and get more ammo just to go finish the mission, which is probably not going to have that good of a payout anyway. Now, with all this being said, here's the big question. Should you mix weapon types? Again, I hate to be a broken record, but once ship armor has come into the game, I feel like this will be a viable option. You'll be able to counter both defensive types, being shields and armor. So, in the future or present, if you decide to combine weapon types, it may be a viable option now to use something like a Gatling gun, which has a higher amount of ammo. This gives you buffer room, just in case you're in tight situations as well. For some, combining weapon types or using ballistics at all may not even be an option because they just can't afford to lose the DPS and afford the hassle they bring sometimes. For me personally, I only use ballistic weapons when I know the target I'm going up against or when I'm in a fleet. As a quick side note though, I feel like with the shield rework that we just went through, if you're going against a bigger ship, it may just be better to go with ballistics because you're just going to bypass some of the shields. The most important part about this though guys is the fact that it's your choice. You're the one playing the game, not me. I can preach stats, I can go through hardpoint.io and show you the data, I can go over heat values, I can go over all this, but it just doesn't matter because I'm not you. If you're comfortable using scatter guns, cannons, or whatever damage type or firing mode, then use it. Because who cares what I have to say? It doesn't matter. I just give you guys the info, I go over analytics because I'm very passionate about this game, I'm passionate about helping you guys, and that's all that matters for me at least. As long as you, the viewer, get something out of this, that's all I care. But if you already have your mind set, then so be it. Go have fun with the game, because again, that's why I'm here. As always, I thank you for the love and support. If you enjoyed this video and you got something out of it, then please consider liking it and sharing it with anybody who would find this helpful. Also, tell me your own thoughts on ballistic and energy weapons below and feel free to subscribe. Remember citizens, your subscriptions help me reach out even further to the community so they also can benefit from my content. Also, feel free to further support me on Patreon. It's never necessary, however, it's much appreciated. But until next time, fellow citizens, I will see you on the flip side.